Hey chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 1.07, limiting reactants. Have your periodic table, calculator, pen, and paper ready. And we've done this a little bit before, um, but we're going to go more in depth now. And so if you feel like, oh wait, I don't remember any of it before, that's okay. We're going to start at the beginning, and then we'll get into the more in-depth problems. Check this out. Okay. So this is the same website that I told you to go to before. So in the lessons, if you haven't yet, um, if you could back up and go into that. And so the reason that I wanted you to do this is so that you can look at some story problems and you can see them with actual real life items like the sandwich. And so if I make a meat and cheese sandwich, obviously I need two pieces of bread slice of meat and a slice of cheese. It doesn't matter if I have eight pieces of cheese, I can still only make how many sandwiches? One. Okay. And so if you didn't have a chance to play around with that, please do. And then you can also um, do it with, um, they have games, so you can make sure that you really know how to do it, which is always a good idea. And let's well, it's combust methane. So I can look at this and say one CH4 plus two molecules of dioxide yield one molecule of carbon dioxide plus two molecules of water. Okay, so I need one CH4 and I need two oxygens. It doesn't matter if I have eight oxygens, I can still only make one carbon dioxide and one water, I would just have leftover. So then you can look at, okay, well, look at this. If I have two CH4s, then I still have extra oxygen, but I can make two carbon dioxides and four waters. All right, what about three? Oh, yep, I'm still good. Oh, four, now I have extra CH4. And I have one extra oxygen even, because look, I need two oxygens for every one CH4. So it's a good visual to really look through, especially if you're feeling like I don't get this at all, make sure you do that website. And again, when you go back into, if you look at what I posted for you in the actual lesson, um, this is what I'm talking about. Here's where you can find the sandwiches thing, um, just as some practice, because I know it won't show up in this recording. So, all right. Why do we balance chemical equations? Other than that, it's like the most fun thing you can do all day long, right? <laughs> so the real reason that we balance our chemical equations is to show the law of conservation of mass. In other words, to show that we have the same amount of mass in the reactant as the product. Because in chemistry, we can't create or destroy anything. We simply change form. So let's look at this example. I have two N2H4 plus one N2O4, and I drew them out for us. So two molecules of N2H4 for every one molecule of N2O4 yields three molecules of N2 plus four water molecules. To show we have the same amount of mass in the reactants as the products, we balanced it, and we have the same number of what on each side of the equation? we have the same number of atoms, right? How many atoms of nitrogen on the left? Well, two times two is four, plus two is six, or uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. How many oxygen on both sides? One times four is four, four times one is four. So we have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides, but different amounts or different numbers of what? Molecules. So on the left, I have one, two, three molecules, or two plus one equals three molecules. On the product side, how many molecules? Three plus four, or add them up, gives me seven. So it doesn't matter that we have different amounts of molecules. That's just how we grouped them. Okay, it's like saying, um, I have five M&Ms in one hand and seven M&Ms in the other hand. And your brother said, well, I have 11 M&Ms in one hand and one M&M in the other. You both have 12 M&Ms. It doesn't matter how many are in each hand as long as each have a total of 12 M&Ms. By the way, 
my littlest one is going through potty training and she gets M&Ms as her reward. So that's why M&Ms are like in every example I think of. All right, so you can even picture these as little M&Ms, so much prettier. So we need how many molecules of N2H4 to make how many molecules of N2? So we look up here at our coefficients and N2H4, we need two. And when we have two of them, assuming we have enough of the rest of the chemicals, we make how many N2s? We make three molecules of N2. I could also say I need two moles of N2H4 to make three moles of N2. I think it helps to think of these equations as your recipe. Okay, so try and think of it like something that you've done in real life. Hopefully, you've made some type of food in real life. If not, you need to learn how to cook. And we know that we need two of these in order to make three of those. The ratio is two to three. Now, technically, this is pronounced two as in T-O, but when I say T-W-O, then T-O, three, it says two, 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 and that can get confusing. So I pronounce it two to three. So two to three is the mole ratio. In other words, instead of this whole big sentence, I just say, oh yeah, my mole ratio is two to three for N2H4 compared to N2. So this is my mole ratio. All I did was look at the coefficients and say, oh, if I have two of those, assuming I have enough of the rest of everything, I'm going to make three of those. When you are stuck, convert to moles. So this mole ratio is super important. We use it when we want to compare one chemical to another chemical or change from one chemical to another chemical in grams or liters or, of course, moles. So moles are magic. Anytime you're stuck in these problems, convert to moles. When changing from one chemical to another, convert to moles. The magic of the mole. Your mole ratio, this two to three, your coefficients, is how you're allowed to legally, according to the rules of math and chemistry, go from one chemical to another. All right. So what is the mole ratio of N2O4 to N2? All right, so we look up here. How many N2O4s do I need? Just one. How many N2s is that going to make? Assuming I have enough of the rest, it's going to make three. So my ratio is one to three. Okay, what about N2O4 to H2O? Do you know how I got one to four? One to four. So how many moles of water would I make if I had two moles of N2O4? Okay, so instead of having one mole, I have twice as much. So assuming I have enough of everything else, if I make if I have twice as much of this, I'm making a double batch of cookies. A double batch will give me how many waters? Eight. Because two times one gives me two. I doubled it. Four times two gives me eight. All right, so that was an easy one to do in your head. What about when I give you numbers like this? Some of you can do it in your head. And I like to start out with an easy one you can do in your head. So that when you get stuck on the harder ones, you can say, okay, if she gave me easy numbers, I could do it. Well, how did you do it? So let's start out with 7.2 moles of N2O4 and tell me how many moles of water would that make? So start with what you know. On the bottom, remember this part? On the bottom of the next fraction, I have to have the same unit. Why? Why do I have to have the same unit? So that it will do what? So that it will cross out. Sorry, I'm trying to get the line tool to work. There you go. There you go. So I can cross off my units and I can figure out how many moles of water I have. I knew for every one mole of N2O4, I get four moles of H2O. Because of up here, my ratio was one to four. Put it in your calculator, 7.2 times four gives you 28.8 moles of H2O. So instead of doubling it, I multiplied it by 7.2.
All right, so then we're going to get into limiting reactant. We can now find our limiting reactant. The reactant that runs out first and causes the reaction to stop producing products. So this is like when I talked to you before, if you're making cars, if you have four car bodies and a hundred tires, which one are you going to run out of first? Well, four car bodies, they each need four wheels. So I need 16 wheels, 500 wheels. I'm going to have lots of leftover wheels. Okay. It's the same idea. Which one's going to run out first? That one is my limiting reactant. All right, so let's do a story problem. If I have four moles of N2O4 and four moles of N2H4, which is the limiting reactant? So again, this one you might just be able to figure out by looking at it. You can see our recipe or our chemical equation says we need two N2H4s for every one N2O4s. So if we have four of each, which will run out first? Well, if I need twice as many of these, the N2H4 is going to run out first, right? I need two of these, one of those. All right, so I used one, two, and one. I used three, four, and I'm only on my second one. So it's going to run out first, therefore it's my limiting reactant. And some of them you can just look at the equation and figure out that way. The ratio of N2O4 to water is one to four. So four moles of N2O4 will make how many moles of water? Okay, so if I have, I only need one. If I have four of them, how many waters am I going to make? Well, it's four times as many. So four times four is 16 moles of water. Okay, now let's look at N2H4 to water. What's my ratio of N2H4 to water? It would be two to four, so four molecules. So how do I get from two to four? I don't just have two to make my recipe, I'm making a double batch, so I, make, so I have four of them starting out. So how many waters do I end up with? Eight moles of water. And when you do it this way, you can see that, oh yep, this one only makes eight moles, it's going to run out a lot, lot sooner. So conclusion, N2H4 makes less water because it ran out first, so it is our limiting reactant. Okay, you can do this another way. <laughs> That's right, there's a couple ways to figure this one out. So now I'm saying, okay, look at four moles, right? Write down what I start with, four moles N2O4, and I have to have moles of N2O4 down here because my units are going to cancel off, and I'm trying to find moles of water. So to find your limiting reactant, just pick one. I could have picked N2 and done all these problems about N2. It doesn't matter. I just picked water because, <laughs> quite frankly, it's something more common. So water. And I'm just going to see how much each of these make of either of the products. So I picked water. So what unit's going to go up here? Well, what am I changing to? Moles of water. So when I'm changing from one chemical to another, doo -doo -doo -doo, I use the magic mole or the mole ratio. So what number goes down here? A one. And what number goes up on top? A four, because I need, I get four moles of water. There's my four for every one mole of N2O2. Put it in your handy dandy calculator. You get 16 moles of water. Set it up like this by yourself for N2H4 and make sure you know how to set this up. So hit the pause button, set it up. So in other words, you're kind of zoning out on me. Not good. I want you to start out with four moles of N2H2 and then tell me how many moles of water that would make. Answer is? Put it in our calculator and you get the eight moles of water again. So this is the setup we're going to use for harder problems. Again, you can see that less water is made with four moles of N2H4 than four moles of N2O4 because N2O4 is your limiting reactant, meaning it ran out first. All right, so 
which is the limiting reactant if I have 10 grams of N2O4? 